come from Toronto, mm -hmm. doing a master's in artificial intelligence, top subject at the top university. I'm curious, like yeah. if since I'm studying artificial intelligence, if I were to get some AI, some model to say these sentences, would that make this AI a, a Muslim? <laughs> You're studying at Imperial College, which is one of the top universities in the world. That's a good one, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. That's Imperial College, brilliant. And uh, you're studying artificial intelligence, all right? Yes, yes, I'm studying. Okay, that. you're studying artificial intelligence. So do you believe there is an ulti ultimate intelligence or not? You know, a creator of the universe, or you're not sure? Uh, there could be. Uh, there, there might not be. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a complex question. Fine, okay, fine, no problem. I, I said to you when I stopped you, I said I'll prove to you in five minutes there's a creator. Uh, and your name is, sorry? Arjun. Arjun, okay. Arjun, you're studying artificial intelligence at Imperial College, one of the top universities in the world. And uh, I said to you, there's, I'll prove to you there's an ultimate intelligence. That's the creator in five minutes. Okay. Really, there are four pieces of evidence, Arjun. There's a creator, right? Okay. First one is called cosmological argument cause and effect. Second one is called the design argument, the teleological argument. The third are lives of certain people, what we call the prophets of God. The fourth is the most powerful. If I do all four, it'll take like half an hour. So I'll do the fourth one, which is the most powerful, if that's okay with you. And that is this. The Creator has made us, Arjun, you Arjun, me, all human beings in, here in central London, for a reason. All human beings everywhere in the world, for a reason. To tell us why he made us and why he put us on the earth, the Creator, God, we call him Allah, has sent many messengers with this message. And how do we know these messengers or prophets of God were sent by God? How do we know there's a God? They were sent with miracles. So the miracles they were given prove that they were sent by God and prove there is a God as well, Arjun. And there's a miracle we can see today, and that miracle is the Quran. You've heard of the Quran? I've heard of the Quran, yes. Okay, you've heard of the Quran, brilliant. Okay, and you're, and you're, you're, which country are you from, sorry? Uh, Canada. Canada. You're Canadian, and you've come over here to study, brilliant. Uh, which city in Canada? Toronto or something? Toronto, yes. yes. Okay, well, famous, of course. So you're from Toronto, and uh, yeah, I'm going to prove to you there's a create in five minutes, okay. Uh, as I said, right. Here, the Quran is a miracle for 15 reasons. The Quran is a miracle for many reasons. I'm going to use 15 reasons here. See what you think and have a look, and you tell me your opinion, okay? And you tell me if it makes sense, okay? It's a 1,400-year-old book, the Quran, in the Arabic language, and it's unchanged. It doesn't make it a miracle, Arjun, but um, it's just something that everyone accepts and agrees. Yeah, that, like, it's... it's it's commendable, like, I mean, I, I don't know, like, exactly, you know, like, I haven't, you know, done all my research, but I'll take your word that it's unchanged, which is commendable, considering a lot of other biblical texts have been changed over time, which is, like, so it's, it's commendable, yeah. That's good, that's good, you're well spoken, right, okay, right, okay. Number two, the Quran contains many statements about our observable universe, what in common language people call statements about science. Uh, secondly, thirdly, the Quran, even though it talks about a diverse number of subjects, Arjun, the Quran doesn't make any mistakes, scientific mistakes, when it comes to established science. Obviously, science is changing, but when it comes to established science, the Quran doesn't make a single scientific error, which is, you know, where does it come from? Four, the book is easy to memorize in the Arabic language. Millions of people have memorized the Quran, Arjun, and most of them can't even speak uh, Arabic, you know, so the people can't speak Arabic and that yet they can memorize the Quran, you know, I mean, I'm not Arab, I can't speak Arabic, but I can memorize the Quran. Mm -hmm. How can people do that? Five, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, couldn't even read and write. So this man, Prophet Muhammad, is a shepherd looking after sheep. He meditates in a cave. He gets visitation by the Holy Spirit, an angel. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. And then these words kept coming down over 23 years. So, you know, was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaking the truth or not? You know, where does these words come from? Well, especially when a man can't even read and write. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see the point? Number six, the words do help of the Quran with people's stress, give them happiness and contentment. 
Number seven, uh, Arjun, the Quran contains no contradictions. It fits together as if it was all written in one go, but it wasn't. It was written over many years, and yet it fits together as if it's written all in one go. Okay. Number eight, the way the Arabic language has been used inside the Quran, Arjun, it is very powerful, and actually it's inimitable. It cannot be imitated and copied, the way the Arabic language has been used. I'm not saying Arabic language is powerful, it's just the way it's been used is really powerful, Arjun. Sure. Yep. Number nine, it contains God's challenge. There's a, if a human being made this challenge, the human being would be mad and arrogant. And the challenge is this, inside the Quran, God says that no one can ever produce one chapter like the Quran. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the shortest chapter is only three sentences. So to say that, so the author of the book, whoever it is, is saying uh, that uh, no one can ever produce three sentences which match the eloquence, the language, the power, the rhetoric of the Quran, the narrative of the Quran. So I mean, that's a very arrogant statement for a human being to make. Only God can say, say it, and he has inside the Quran. This book now has produced the largest practice religion, Arjun. 1.9 billion followers. It's also the fastest growing religion in the world. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, but it's going all over the world very fast. I know it's growing very fast. I'm not sure if it's the largest practiced. Um, but it is the largest practice. Uh, Christianity is a little bit, in pure numbers, Christians are a few more than Muslims. I guess if you mean like um, like Christianity has kind of like fractured into different kind of forms, I guess then that would make sense. Yeah, that's right. And also, most Christians don't really practice their religion. They don't even pray. I they see. don't fast. I, I mean, they celebrate yeah, Christmas. Christmas. That's about it. Like rigorously followed. You mean no, they don't even pray regularly? No, I mean, like like you mean um, like Islam is the most like sort of like rigorously followed, where like they kind of you know, commit to it and, you know, do all the... They take it seriously. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right, Arjun. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And it's the fastest growing religion. It's going very fast in the United Kingdom. Uh, from the 2011 census to the 2021 census, Islam has increased by, like, approximately, like, 50% or something. Mm -hmm. So it's going very fast in the United Kingdom. Christianity is going down very fast in the United Kingdom, by the way. Uh, uh, 2001 census, about 70% of... Uh, people in the United Kingdom identified themselves as Christians. Mm -hmm. That has gone down to 49% in the 20, 2021 survey. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenal decrease, rapid yeah. dec or decrease. Uh, atheism, agnosticism has gone up, uh, and Islam is going up as well. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Okay, number 13, I beg your pardon. Uh, number 12, historical events inside the Quran, Arjun, are 100% accurate. You know, things that happen in history are mentioned inside the Quran, and the Quran doesn't make a single historical error, and it gets everything 100% right. 13, prophecies and predictions inside the Quran, you know, things that will happen after the Prophet Muhammad uh, left the earth, uh, are mentioned, and the Quran gets everything 100% correct again. Mm -hmm. The Quran describes how other religions, like Christian religions, started 1400 years ago. Um, the Quran described this, and again, the Quran got it 100% correct. The Quran contains an economic system and a welfare system, which are not only applicable today, Arjun, you know, from a book that's 1400 years old, they're actually still necessary today. Now, what is the basic message in the Quran? It's very important. The basic message in the Quran, Arjun, is there's a creator, God, Allah. This creator has made Arjun for a reason. All human beings, generally, yeah, everyone for a reason. And... Uh, the Quran tells us to get to the Creator, uh, we need to be true followers of people like Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them. And also Noah and David, you know, the Old Testament prophets. Yeah, you see, it's an inclusive message. Now, the Jewish people follow Abraham and Moses. The Quran tells us we need to follow Abraham and Moses. And, and uh, the Christian people follow Jesus. Okay. And the Quran tells us we are the true followers of Jesus as well. So it's an inclusive message. And uh, it just makes sense, you know. Okay, what's the difference between Islam and Christianity? In the Christian religion, they believe that God became a man. It's called the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. That's the Christian religion. And uh, the Muslim religion says that Jesus is somebody sent by God. He is the Messiah, and he's the Word of God. Okay. So he's not God. He's somebody sent by God. Yeah. And also, this not only makes more sense it's actually biblically accurate if you follow the bible and you follow jesus in the bible you will never believe he is god you believe he's a great guy 
he doing was miracles. The son of God or something. Christian religion, yeah, 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 yeah. Christian religion teaches that he's son of God, but also he's God as well. He's part of a trinity. There is God the Father, there is God who's called the Son, and there's God who's called the Holy Spirit, right? So there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, which are all three in one. So it's the trinity. And this not only doesn't make sense, uh, the reason it doesn't make sense, I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense. Three reasons. Number one, God can do everything. In the Bible, Jesus says, by myself, without God, who's called the Father, I can do nothing. I see. If Jesus was God, he would say, I know everything. But when Jesus was asked about the end of the world, the hour, he says, of the hour, no one knows, not the angels, not the sun. He says, only God knows. So how can he be God? Thirdly, if he was God, in the Bible, Jesus would be saying, I am the highest, the almighty. But in the Bible, Jesus says, uh, according to the Bible, Jesus said, uh, the Father, or God, is greater than me, greater than all. Also, Jesus, when he was leaving the world, he said, I am going to my Father, your Father, my God, and your God. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's clear. Also, Jesus talked about sitting on the right-hand side of God. Mm -hmm. So he can't be God. So not only is this message of Islam consistent uh, with the Old Testament prophets, it's also consistent with Jesus. So how can you go wrong? Okay, what I would suggest you do, Arjun, uh, you don't, okay, I would say you connect with the Creator, right? It's very easy. And you'll see at some stage, you'll get an epiphany and enlightenment. Okay, let me show you a book here very quickly. Right. Here, what you do is, Arjun, right. Right. sorry, what you do, Arjun, is have a go at meditating like this. I call it meditation because prayer uh, for most people means asking for something. For us, that is dua, that is different. What we're talking about here, prayer is, you see the prayer word salah, or prayer in Arabic, yeah. comes from the word connection, connection with the Creator. So, I would say connect with the Creator, and we do it by like this, we pray like this, and in the Bible, Abraham, I don't know, the cameraman can film that, that's fine there, that's very good, perfect, yep, yep. And uh, in the Bible, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, in the Bible, it says they fell on their face like this and prayed to God. Okay, so it's the way that Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, yeah. prayed or meditated. So I would just have a go at meditating like this. Can I give you that? It's free. There's no obligation. Yeah, have a go at meditation like that, and at some stage, Arjun, you'll get an epiphany, enlightenment. Okay. So you pray to God like this in position. You meditate to God, okay. and ask God to guide you. So spend a few minutes like this every day, Arjun. I would suggest you say two sentences and then the words, the, your prayer will be much more powerful. The two say word sentence are this. First sentence is, I will only pray to God, the Creator, Allah. Yeah. Right. Secondly, you say, I accept Muhammad as his servant, servant of God and messenger of God. Mm -hmm. Right. And you say the two sentences, you have a connection with God. Right. Enjoy your life. You're a young guy. You're doing artificial intelligence. Get a connection with God and then see what happens, you know, uh, because look, even the rich and famous aren't happy. As artificial intelligence, you can make a lot of money, right? You could be a super rich guy. Maybe you start your own artificial intelligence company, Maybe. right? Maybe you become a billionaire. Will you be happy? That'd be nice, right? That'd be cool. I don't know if I'd be fully fulfilled, but it'd be you nice. won't. You won't. Do you know why? Because whatever you have, uh, my friend, you are going to get old. You're going to die one day. Right. So even if you're a billionaire, you're going to leave it all behind. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. No, for sure. Okay. Yeah. And there is something much, much higher. Uh, that is to connect with the Creator. You see, people who are spiritual people are much happier. Are you a spiritual person yourself? In ways. Yeah, but not. You don't. But you're not sure about the Creator. So the, okay. What is the proof of the Creator? See, with these characteristics in the Quran, Arjun, I'm sure you agree. This is a very powerful, influential book. I mean, uh, I'd have to read it to, to really understand, uh, to see if all of these are accurate. But I mean, if, if science is changing and uh, it like explains science in, you know, old ways that have then changed, it doesn't seem like, I mean, I'd have to read to see like what, what it actually describes the science as. But if the science has changed and it says, you know, something about the science like initially, then this would suggest that, okay, it's, it's gotten some things incorrect. Obviously, like, I'd have to do my own research. No, no, it doesn't. You see, the point is, with 1.9 billion followers, I'm a scientist as well, really, uh, from King's College in London. Mm -hmm. uh, if Quran contained scientific errors, I would be the first to say Quran can't be from God. And then I would say, 
is there a God or not? You know, is there Allah or not? Because Quran cannot have a single scientific error. In fact, it can't even have a single error when it comes to any sentences, any words in the Quran. Because we believe the Quran are the actual words of God spoken to the Holy Spirit, which is an angel, mm -hmm. who then convey this message to Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, I would say, are you happy to have a go praying? Are you meditation? I, I think I'd, I'd more so be interested in, in like, actually seeing like reading the Quran and seeing like uh, you know seeing like if it's actually this this miracle that's touted because I feel like you know each person they kind of have to kind of be their own skeptic and like you know do their own research and you know like actually like go through things and that's how you know you you gain like a, an acceptance or like a you know like you a, a greater understanding of you know how all things are conducted um, and and it wouldn't even just be like the Quran it'd be interesting to read you know the Bible I've, I've never read the Bible um, and then, you know, like many religious texts, right, it'd be interesting to see, you know, the, the cross correlations between them, the, the differences and, you know, understanding, you know, like how the world is mapped over, you know, thousands of years on, on how this is like impacted humanity. So I feel like I'd have to kind of do my own research. It's like, OK, well, then maybe, right, there's a lot about the universe that we don't actually understand. And even if there is a God, maybe there's a lot about God that we, you know, couldn't possibly understand because humans are very simple in comparison to what a God would be. Right, so I'm not denying that there is a God or there isn't a God. I'm just saying it's, it's a very, very complex thing, you know. And I feel like a lot of humans like to kind of see things in their own image, right? That's why, you know, in like Hinduism, you'll see like gods that kind of like, you know, take a kind of human form, or you'll see Jesus, or you'll, you know, you'll see other gods or prophets or whatever. But in reality, if if it's something that could create something as vast and expansive as the universe, it would have to be something so, so, so complex that you know maybe we would try to understand it. But I don't think we, we fully ever could. That's a good answer. That's a good point. Okay. What I would suggest is, another thing we can do is, we'll get a copy of the Quran, sure. if you're prepared to have a look, and we'll open it where you want me to open it, or you open it, right? And we'll say, I'll say to God, Allah, please guide Arjun through the Quran. And if you're prepared to have a go and say, God, if you exist, Allah, guide me through the Quran. Let's see what the Quran shows. And usually I find... 95% of the time, the words are directly relevant to you. Let me get a copy of the Quran and have a look. So I'll say, Arjun, uh, please Allah guide Arjun through the Quran. Okay, we call this the Quran because it's in Arabic and English. Okay, Quran has to be in Arabic to be the Quran. Anything in another language is an approximate translation, we believe, of the Quran. Yeah, that's right. So I'll ask Allah to guide Arjun through the Quran. Are you happy to ask Allah and say, Allah, guide me through the Quran? Are you happy with that? Sure. Okay, so... Say it in your mind or you can say it loud. You can say, Allah, please guide me through the Quran. Sure, Allah, please guide me through the Quran. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so let's, okay, uh, now you choose a page. So it's not my choice. Now, we've got about a thousand pages here inside the Quran and maybe about 7,000 verses. Uh, you choose the page. Yeah, you have a look. You choose the page. You've asked Allah. Allah will guide you, inshallah. You choose whatever you want. Up to you. You choose the page and let's see what it says. There, are you happy with that? Sure. You choose that. Okay, but let's just have a look. Which side? That side or that side? Um... Okay. Now here, we've got a chapter called Surah Al-Mu'minun for the viewers. Uh, this is uh, Surah number 23, chapter number 23. Surahs are called chapters, basically. Uh, sorry, chapters are called Surahs. So chapter 23 of the Quran, and it says here, here look, let's, let's see what it talks about. God says in the Quran, this is Surah 23, Al-Mu'minun, verse 14. God says, then we made the sperm drop into a clinging clot, and we made the clot into a lump of flesh. And we made from the lump bones, and we covered the bones with flesh. Then we developed him into another creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Here, in uh, verse 14 of the Quran, which you've picked, uh, oh, you know, Allah guided you. Sure. You've just amazingly picked a verse which describes embryology. Now, and also, this is one of the ones we, on our leaflet, says that in the Quran, there is embryology, and this is the verse you've picked, verse 14, chapter 23 of the Quran. Mm -hmm. God describes embryology. Professor Keith Moore, mm -hmm. by the way, oh, this is interesting. You're from Canada. I am. Professor Keith Moore is professor of anatomy at, guess what, the University of Toronto in Canada. That's right. And he says the statements inside the Quran were not known 100 years ago, let alone at the time of Muhammad 1400 years ago. Mm -hmm. He says this book must be from God. And interesting, you're from Canada, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, and Professor Keith Moore is also Canadian, and you've just happened to pick the verse. Just 
funnily enough, coincidentally, yeah. the verse which describes embryology, mm -hmm. which Professor Keith Moore, we mentioned him here on our leaflet, uh, embryo here, there, yes, 23, 13, 14, 23, 14, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, describes embryology. Isn't that amazing? That is cool. That is cool. Look, out of seven, nearly 7,000 verses of the Quran, you picked with Allah's guidance the verse which describes embryology. I didn't, I had no, oh, yeah, yeah I, I didn't do it. There's no trick. There's no trick. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's a normal page. It's not a special thing. It's no trick. And, you know, this, so I would say, so this, you know, this is amazing. And it contains, look, the words continue. Verse 15 of Surah Mu'minun. Uh, yeah, uh, this is chapter 23 of the Quran for our viewers. Mm -hmm. Then God says, continued, translate from the Arabic. Then indeed, after that, you are to die. And then indeed, you on the day of resurrection will be resurrected. It's a message to you. Mm -hmm. Look, you were a baby, an embryo inside your mum. Yep. Right. And then God says that one day you're going to die, I'm afraid. So we're all going to die, right? Then indeed on the day of resurrection, day of judgment, you will be resurrected. And we have created above you seven layered heavens. And never have we been of our creation unaware. You talked about the creation of the universe being so vast. And this is again it's mentioned here. Look, and we have created above you seven layered heavens. And never have we been of our creation unaware. Then God says, translated of course from the Arabic. Mm -hmm. And we have sent down rain from the sky in a measured amount and settled it in the earth, and indeed we are able to take it away. And we have brought forth for you thereby gardens of palm trees and grapevines, in which for you are abundant fruits and from which you eat. I'm curious. Amazing, isn't that amazing? It's very cool. Um, isn't I'm, that very cool? It, it is really cool. Yeah. Uh, I suggest connect with the Creator and see what happens. Uh, really? You say the two sentences, I will only worship God, Allah. I accept Muhammad as a messenger of God. Do the meditation, the book you've got there the, on prayer, yeah, and at some stage you're guaranteed to get an epiphany. Sure, sure. Um, I, I'm curious, like, why did the Quran come like 1,400 years ago and not like you know 10,000 years ago? Or that's a very good, very good question. That's a, no, that's a very, very good question. Okay, the first thing is God says in the Quran, there isn't a nation on the earth to whom we have not sent a warner, a messenger. So God has sent warners or prophets, messengers, to all nations at all times. Okay. Right. Also, God says inside the Quran, translated, we did not send a messenger, a prophet, except in the language of his people. So if a prophet was sent to China, he would have spoken Chinese. If a prophet was sent to Japan, he would have spoken Japanese. If a prophet was sent to the Eskimos, he would have spoken Eskimo language. I don't know what that is. Right, Eskimo, Eskimoese or something. I don't know. Right, okay. So God has sent prophets to all nations at all times, speaking the language of their people with the same message. Mm -hmm. Right. The Quran is really the culmination, the conclusion of the message. It's the last message. And that's what God says in the Quran. The last bit of the Quran to be revealed, God says in the Quran, approximate words are that today Allah has perfected our way of life for us, uh, so completed our, our way of life is, on the world is perfected. Yes, in the Quran. Yes. Because, I'll tell you why. You see, on this earth, why are we here on this earth? Yeah, mm. uh, important question. Uh, from an Islamic point of view, we're here on this earth here, Arjun, to go through a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. right? Why? It's an obstacle course. You could call it a maze. Mm -hmm. It calls, uh, you know, a difficult course we're going through, like a maze. You know, like mice go through a maze? Sure. It's like that, yeah? Why are we going through this? So that we can try and become good enough, pure enough, to be able to go into God's presence, into His heaven. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, to be able to see His face. And that's the ultimate goal of yeah. purpose of life. So the Creator has made us to connect with Him, have a relationship with Him and to know Him. It's all part of worshipping Him. Yeah. He's put Arjun, me, all the human beings here in London, on the earth, or, well, all over the world, on the earth, to go through a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. And we're being tested by the Creator so that we can go become good enough to ultimately go into His presence and to see Him. Sure. And when we see, look, we look at sunsets. Oh, it's, it's no, no, he's not a he or she. You see, the, the beauty of the word Allah is not masculine or feminine. We use he because it's default. Sure. It's a default position. You know, you automatically say he. Or if it's a car, people say she. My car's lovely. 
isn't she? You know, it's like that. So it's a deep opposition. For the creator, we use the word he, why but he's not he, or, he, he's not he or she. The, why do you think it's the default? In Arabic language. I'm talking about the language. In the Arabic language, it's the default position. Uh, but God is not male or female. God makes it very clear. In the Quran, you'll find, God says in the Quran, um, uh, there is nothing like him. Okay. There is nothing like God. He is, can you, look, look at the size of the universe. It's As big. you said, it's big for sure. It's, it's really unbelievably big. big. You know, I don't know whether you know, um, astrophysics is one of my favorite topics. Okay. okay, the star is a sun. I beg your pardon. The sun is a star. Okay. How, do you know how big the biggest star is that found in the universe? Uh, it's very big. Uh, in volume, would it be 10 times bigger than the sun or? It's billions times bigger than the sun, like hundreds of millions times bigger than the sun. Hundreds of millions of times bigger than the sun, you're saying, right? Yeah. Do you know what it is? It's actually, you could Google it, it's five billion times bigger than the sun. Fair game, yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised considering there's black holes that are, that are much, much bigger than the sun and they were stars once, so that makes sense. It's amazing. This is the creator. This is who you're connecting with. You're not connecting with the Prime Minister of uh, Canada or Rishi Sunak, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Prime Minister of the uh, United Kingdom or, or Joe Biden or anybody else. You're connecting with the creator of this vast universe. You can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. And the more you ask him, the Quran says, and the Prophet Muhammad told us, the more he loves you. Mm -hmm. And the more you thank him, he'll give you more. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever you have, I'm sorry, you're not really going to be happy on this earth because there's an ulterior... Uh, aim, ultimate goal, and that is to connect with the Creator and to see the Creator. Yeah. And when he's that, that's what we're here for. So I, do you, I would say this: you say the two sentences, start to meditate, and see how if it affects your life. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I do meditate, and never in like a, a religious capacity. But um, you meditate on the Creator, or just just on nothingness. Um, I meditate on uh, you know foundations of various types of philosophy, you know Stoicism or you know uh, Lao Tzu or you know different you know even Buddhism. Like I I respect many different types of religions and philosophy, and I find that they have intriguing intersections and differences that they should all be respected and you know listened to. I think that uh, it's a very like complicated topic, but I I do I do respect religion in, in many respects. Um, I feel that the large decline of the United States has largely been because of the uh, the lack of a centralized religion that gives people a sense of you know self actualization. This has been uh, in reference to the America. This has also been impaired with the the decline of the American dream that kind of uh, prevents people from being able to self actualize in a specific manner. I think you're well spoken. You're, you're very eloquent. <laughs> I mean, I try my best. Um, but uh, which year student are you, by the way? Uh, I, I'm doing my like masters. So oh, you're doing a masters in artificial intelligence. Yeah. Wow, that's clever stuff. Clever stuff. Yeah, it's 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 cool. Um, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. very cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think it's it's very interesting, and um, it's not like I, I denounce religion. Where I'm not like particularly religious. Like you know, growing up, I, I went to the, to the Gudwa, to the Mandir, and um, that's I, Hindu and Sikh background. Hindu and Sikh, yes. And, um, you know, and, and I respect tenets of their religion and, like, you know, both, uh, even though, like, you know, sometimes they disagree and sometimes they agree. And, you know, I respect tenets of Islam. Um, and so, can we agree there is probably, there's a creator? I, I would like to believe yeah. so. Okay, with these, would you, okay, come back to these characteristics here on this leaflet. With these characteristics, you see, okay, let me give you two things that are beautiful about Islam. Sorry, let me give you these books back, these material back. Sure. Okay, let me give you two things about Islam which are very amazing and beautiful. Number one, there's no clergy, there's no priest, there's no pope, there's no one making money from, there's no church organization, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, Islam is purely, purely, purely unitarian and monotheistic. A lot of religions say they're monotheistic, but in Islam, there's no idolatry allowed. We don't pray to anybody else except God, Allah. Uh, we don't pray to any statue or idol or, or any human being. Mm -hmm. We only pray to the unseen creator of the universe. Which creator? Which God? The God that Abraham worshipped, the God that Moses worshipped, the God that Jesus worshipped, the God that uh, Muhammad worshipped, of course, peace be upon all of them. Mm -hmm. So it's an unseen God. No statues, no idols, no idolatry. This God is perfect, all-knowing. He has no beginning. He has no end. He knows everything, sees everything. He has no parents. He has no children. Creator of the universe. Makes sense, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be, it'd be cool. Um, so would you like to connect with the Creator, then do the prayers and see what happens, and then see if you get an epiphany, enlightenment. So how do you connect? You Sorry, you say two sentences. Number one, I will only pray to the Creator. 
Allah. But by the way, the word Allah was also used by Jesus. Same word used by Jesus in the Aramaic language. Jesus didn't use the word God. Also, throughout the Bible, the angels worship God by singing Alleluia. Mm -hmm. And Alleluia is Allahu Ya. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, you said, you mentioned you as a child, you've been to Gurdwara, etc. Yes, yes, I have. Sikh temple. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, the uh, Sikhs also, uh, they call him Wahiguru or Malik. Mm -hmm. They also use the word Tawheed. And we believe that the Guru Garan Sahib, mm -hmm. the book, yeah. uh, 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 I mean, sorry, it's not that we believe it. The Sikhs themselves would say that 30 to 50 percent of the Guru Granth Sahib is from a, a Muslim saint, a mu Muslim religious man. Okay. That's why lots of similarities there. So I would suggest, uh, say that you will only pray to the Creator, mm -hmm. Allah, and say that Muhammad uh, is uh, his servant and his messenger. How do we know that? You see, with these characteristics on this leaflet here, 15 reasons why the Quran is a miracle. Yeah. It's clearly a very powerful book and 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 meditate and see what happens see if it changes your life um, so are you happy to do that sure I can I can try it out I, I, I'd first probably like to I'd probably read the Quran first yeah, yeah. Um, no, read the Quran as well but do you want to say I will only worship the Creator and I accept Muhammad as his servant and his messenger like many others by the way it doesn't mean you're rejecting Abraham Moses Jesus Noah Buddha might have been a prophet of God as well we don't know uh, and uh, and, and you mentioned that your background, you've been to Hindu temple as well. Yeah, yeah but I've been to the Mandir, to the Gurdwara. Yeah. Um, and can I tell you this, can I tell you this very interestingly? If you look in the Hindu books, the Bhagavad Gita's, uh, the Puranas, the Vedas, you'll find Prophet Muhammad is mentioned by name. Yeah. Nine times as Ahmad, which is one of his names, once as Muhammad. You actually find the name of Muhammad mentioned in the... In your books, the Hindu books, not your books, but I mean the Hindu books, scriptures. So, you know, it's it's an inclusive message. And even the books, the uh, Bhagavad Gita, the Puranas, the Vedas, talk about worshipping one God who's got no form. Now, I know the Hindus nowadays, they have, you know, different idols they worship. But the books, if you look at our books, if you look at your books, sorry. I say I books, but I'm also Indian. But if you look at our books, the Hindu books you'll find that it talks about there is only one God right. and that we should only worship one God. Mm -hmm. uh, the unseen God who's got no form, uh, there's nothing like him. And the Sikh books, the Guru Granth Sahib talks about the same. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the description of Allah, the same. Yeah. So I would say this, uh, would you want to say the two sentences? I will only worship God, so Allah. In my head, like, uh, you know. In your mind? Yeah, in my mind. Okay, yeah. So you say, I am a witness that there is nothing, there's nothing. worthy Worthy. Of my worship, of my worship, except, except the highest power, the highest power, Allah, Allah, and I'm a witness, and I'm a witness that Muhammad, that Muhammad, peace be upon him, peace be upon him, is his servant, is his servant, and his messenger, and his messenger. Or oh, say in Arabic as well, it's more power, very powerful. You say Ashadu, Ashadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, Illallah. Wa wa ashadu ashadu anna anna Muhammadan Muhammadan abduhu abduhu wa wa rasulu rasulu. Yeah. You've said in Arabic exactly the same as Arab uh, in English. Uh, that's it. From my point of view, you're Muslim now. So uh, can I give you a hug? Uh, sure, you can. You can give me a hug. God bless you, brother. God bless you. You're very blessed. You know why you're very blessed? Allah says in the Quran. Inside the Quran, you'll find. I'll give you a copy of the Quran or a translation of the Qur'an, Allah says in the Qur'an, no one can believe in Allah mm -hmm. except with his permission. He actually gave permission for Arjun to connect with the Creator. It's a I very see. big thing.